Today is ground truthing at the Frank Crum site, which the, the site was the uh, St. Matthew's Baptist uh, Church Cemetery site back in the day. This particular site is significant because the Mac Dixon subdivision was this whole property at one point. Mac Dixon was one of the original black people that came to Pinellas County, Clearwater, to purchase property and, you know, raise a family. The goal for this cemetery is to verify the ground penetrating radar survey that they did originally. Truthing is the physical process of verifying that work. So they will dig down to a coffin top and then use finer measures to verify that, yes, a body is here or no, a body is not here. So they are, you know, they're truthing areas close to uh, Missouri Avenue because the original plat map shows that the cemetery went out to at least the middle of Missouri Avenue. They are doing some other truthing because this site has been developed two or three times uh, and there are uh, interior roadways here now. So they're truthing close to those roadways to see if uh, there are uh, grave shafts that go under the roads and you know exactly where they could be. At the end of February 2020, um, Jeff Motes and I came out here um, with permission from Mr. Crum, the property owner, and with support from the local chapter of the NAACP. Um, and we did a GPR survey of the property. So we started out actually in the field that's behind me. That's where the old Williams Elementary School was located. And so, you know, some of the community members had memories that the, the graveyard was like right behind the school. So we started there. And then as we started to look at some of the more documents, we figured out that the cemetery was actually a little bit to the, the north and the east over where we've been working. And so Mr. Crum allowed us to, to come out a few more days and to actually do GPR in the, the parking lot and in some of the other areas of the property right here. And so when we did the GPR over there, we actually found signatures that were, we now know were from graves from the cemetery. My job for this project is to take all of the artifacts that the rest of the crew excavates. And I take them, wash them, analyze them, try to get dates on them, and photograph them so we can return them where we, to where we got them before we close the site. We did have some artifacts come out that have specific dates on them, like coins that were associated with coffins, so we can get a pretty good date on those. We also got things like coffin viewing glass. It would be the glass on the front of a coffin that you could view the individual from. So that is in place, um, not intact, they are broken. And we have found a lot of coffin hardware like nails and tacks, but little else. Normally we take it back to the lab and for every hour that we spend excavating in the field, we spend eight hours analyzing in the lab. This project is unique though, because I need to do this in the field before we close the site. So I'm not excavating at all. I'm purely doing lab analysis. Today, we excavated inside the coffin lines. Um, we have some exposed bone here, such as they're probably leg bones. Um, another two bone fragments, we have exposed the knee bone and another unidentified bone. Up here closer to the west end of the coffin we have an exposed bone in that uh, southern wall. 
Um, and here we have this unidentified metal uh, piece, which I found a couple teeth around, so it's probably where the skull is. Yeah, so we go level by level. We'll excavate 10 centimeters at a time. So this is our fifth level. It does take a, a little while to excavate since we have to document everything in the process. So this probably took about a day to get down. We are still in the investigatory stage of that. Um, we have had meetings with the community, set up a, a separate committee that is specifically looking at what a monument or what a memorial or what the community would want to do in, in this instance. This one is a little different because it's private property, it's a business. So, you know, those kind of considerations need to be taken into account also. The only way that there can be a, a good outcome that everyone can be reasonably happy with is if all the parties involved really come together and have a really open and, and honest dialogue together to try to get to, to a solution. The whole reason that we are out here is because of the community and because of the residents and because of the, um, the descendants and the family members of the people who were buried here who wouldn't give up on getting the truth of you know where their loved ones are buried. And so I can't even imagine what it's like for them to to come here and, and see this, but I, I truly hope that um, it helps to give them peace and knowing, you know, where they are. So one of the things that the community or public at large can do uh, to help, you know, find some of these cemeteries is if, if you know something, say something to somebody about it. If you're aware of a cemetery that, you know, is forgotten or covered over, uh, or neglected, you know, reach out to your local NAACP, reach out to your state, reach out to the city in which you live, the county, and, you know, make them aware of it and, and bring these things to life.